Hello everyone and welcome back to our stream. Uh, we're going to continue today with kind of what we started uh, last week, right after coming back from Cisco Lab Vegas. So we started looking at the .gitlab-ci.yaml file. So that's the YAML file that has the definition of our pipeline, all the stages. So we had started last week and we configured the first stage, the PyTS pre-snapshot. So we're gonna continue today with the other two stages, deploying our SPF and then PyTS post-snapshot. And then once we have this, we'll do a git push and then we'll try the pipeline to see if everything comes together. There's a lot of components. We've had a lot of sessions, but fingers crossed, um, it's gonna work. If not, as usual, we'll troubleshoot and make sure that uh, we figure it out <laughs> in the end. All right, so hope you folks can hear me and can see me well. Uh, let's get started and um, configure stage two of our pipeline, deploying our SPF. Right, so this would be the Ansible playbook that we've built uh, in the previous sessions on configuring SPF with Ansible on the two Nexus virtual switches that we have running in CML in our test environment. So let's start with um, the deploy OSPF stage. All right, so stage, it's called deploy OSPF and then scripts script that I want to run here is I want to run Ansible playbook specify this hosts file and the playbook at this location so it's actions configure OSPF configure dash ospf dot yaml so that's the location of our playbook right takes it from there goes configures ospf or reconfigures ospf whatever the use case may be all right and then that's pretty much it right so at the deploy spf stage you specify the name and then the script what it should do run the Ansible playbook and if it runs okay then it's a green check mark if there's any errors running the playbook then the pipeline at this stage will fail and then we'll go and troubleshoot and see what happened all right so then pyts post snapshot stage all right would be pyts post snapshot so the script to here to run here is change directory into pyts actually we have several scripts here so it would be change directory into the pyts folder and then run the pyts job pyts run job.py with the test bed file test env.yaml all right that's what we called it test env.yaml yes Um, and then the trigger file would be in this case different will be that post um, trigger data file so trigger dash data file is post trigger data file dot yaml And then HTML logs, where to save the logs, would be post 
snapshots folder. And then we're going to take advantage of the diffs that PyTS offers. So you can do a diff before and after. So we're just going to run a PyTS, couple of PyTS diff jobs. So diff pre snapshots pre OSPF this switch zero one dot JSON and post snapshots post OSPF this switch zero one dot JSON and then output this into an OSPF folder right so PyTS with this would just do a diffs between these two JSON files pre OSPF and then post OSPF we'll do a diff and save the output in that OSPF diff folder same thing with our second switch so pre snapshots pre OSPF test distribution switch to and then post snapshots post OSPF test switch 02.json and then output OSPF diff and then we also do a CAD just to go over the OSPF diff having displayed um, diff pre OSPF this zero one this switch zero one dot JSON and also CAD OSPF diff pre OSPF this with zero two dot JSON. So this is basically just displaying that on the terminal as it runs this stage. All right, and then artifacts for this. Artifact, where to save them. Paths would be PyTS OSPF diff diff having trouble spelling this morning and writing over here diff pre OSPF this switch zero one JSON and same thing for switch to OSPF diff pre OSPF this with zero two dot JSON and then when run this always. Right, so these are the three stages of our pipeline. We're gonna use this image from Docker Hub, the web image that I've created that has all the pre-required components. It has Ansible pre-installed over there. It has NetMeco, it has PyTS, right? So that's pre-packaged. I also have the same thing specified in the Docker file here, what that image has, right? So in case you want to build your own image from scratch instead of using mine you can just modify this as python you know this 3.8 here this 3.11 now so if you want to give a try with that rebuild the image re-upload it to docker hub and then you would go and just add you know a 0 0.2 or a version 1 or you could also tag the, these images and give them a specific version and you can use different versions of your image based on what type of uh, packages you have installed and pre-required components you have installed 
as part of your Docker image. So I'm just using this from Docker Hub, grab this image. I've showed you how to upload it previously. I showed you how to create the image. So we've done that. It's already uploading Docker Hub will get pulled down um, as we run the pipeline and will be cached after that. So it doesn't have to all the time go and get the image, download it. So it will be cached. Um, you can point it at this point, right? If you don't want your pipeline to have any internet access, for example, right? You don't want it to reach outside of, uh, of your enterprise or of your internal network. You could have it point to an internal Docker repository where you have your images, right? Um, so you could specify a path. By default, this just goes to Docker Hub and gets it from there. But there's the option also, like I said, to point it to an internal repository for Docker images that you've pre-configured for your pipeline. All right, and then we have the three stages, right? PyTS pre-snapshot, deploying or SPF and then post snapshot with PyTS again. So then fairly straightforward, right? YAML file, we've seen YAML files with Ansible. We're seeing now with, uh, with PyTS, very popular um, document format at this point and how to organize data, this YAML uh, formats, data formats. So we just have simple PyTS pre-snapshot. This is the stage, what it should do. So the script portion is, hey, what this script, what script should I run? Or what should this pipeline do at, at this stage? Just change directory into the PyTS folder and then run the job.py and then specify the testbed file, which is this test underscore environment where we have defined our uh, CML devices, right? And then the trigger data file would be this pre-trigger data file that we've gone over and we've configured the previous weeks, right? What it should do, show OSPF neighbors, show your IP route, OSPF. So check all those outputs of the show commands and make sure that it, you know, the neighborships are established and they exist. And then also the routes are already propagated and they exist on different devices. And then HTML logs, pre-snapshots, where is the folder? pre-snapshots and post-snapshots here folders on where to save the output of the HTML logs for this job for the, at this stage. And the paths, this is specifying the where it should save the output, right, of running this PyTS job is at this location. So pre-snapshots, pre-OSPF distribution switch one and switch two for our two switches. Deploying your SPF, like I said, is just running an Ansible playbook, specifying the host file that we've defined here, and then actions, configure your SPF, configure your SPF.yaml would be the, uh, the Ansible playbook that's configuring SPF for us. And then last but not least would be PyTS post snapshot. This is the stage, PyTS post snapshot stage and the script that it should run. A couple of scripts here, so change directory, run, the job, but specify a different post trigger data file, right? Uh, HTML log, save them in post snapshots, and then do a couple of divs, cats, and then artifacts where to save the, uh, the output of this stage. And that's all she wrote, <laughs> right? So um, that's how we've defined our pipeline. So let me quickly see any questions here from folks. Where do I have a few? So hopefully you folks can hear me and see me well. Uh, so now let's go ahead and do a git push. Let me see a bit because it seems there might be some issues here with the stream. Uh, it works now. Um, so let me check. But I have here my repo on my local installation of GitLab. 
and let's go ahead and because I don't have the gitlab-ci.yaml file yet here you can see I didn't do a git push yet so let's do that next and that's the definition of our pipeline right uh, so where am I here and I save this in the CICD twitch okay so let's change directory to CICD Twitch. Let's do a git status. And we see we have a new file. So that git add everything, git status quickly, and then git commit dash m. Add it dot gitlab dash ci dot yaml pipeline definition file and then git push and there we go now it should be on github.com so if I go here and we're going to the CICD twitch it's been updated now right so we've added this gitlab-ci.yaml file so you folks can get this and use it in your own environments. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and also copy this file. So copy that GitLab. To CICD folder. And then CICD and we should have the GitLab CI file in there too. June 21st, 917. That's the one. All right, so let's do here a git status too. So I have the same file git add git status. Okay, so git commit to my GitLab repo this time, like the GitHub. And the message would be added.gitlab-ci.yaml uh, pipeline configuration file. And then git push would be developer, put in my credentials. And there we go. Now I should have here just now gitlab-ci.yaml, right? So if I go under pipelines, uh, field yaml invalid should be a string uh, to error. Okay, so it seems like we might have an error with our file. Let me go ahead and check that YAML linter. We might have to use Chrome here. Let's see, YAML. YAML validator. So let's copy, see what happened here. So if I do a copy, so what's not liking? As usual, you have to be careful when you um, do any linting. If you have any credentials as part of your file that you're trying to lint, 
be careful because you don't know if they're being saved in the background. But this one, why is it not working? Go. Oh, it's a valid YAML file. Okay. So it is a valid YAML file. Why is... Why is failed two minutes ago? YAML invalid. Before script config should be a string or an asset array of strings up to 10 levels deep. YAML invalid. Error on the CICD configuration file. Okay, so let's see this editor also here it has a built in editor. Before script should be a string or nested strings default. Oh, let's see. Do I have to put those three dashes? Before script config should be a string. No, that's not it. Should be a string. Before script. Export image stages validate validate pipeline <sighs> before script config should be a string or an nested array of strings up to 10 levels deep okay so let's see something's not right here right so what's going on export oh you know what that's what it is there's no semicolon over there okay so that was the problem commit changes and let me do the same here you know gitlab ci uh, I'm just gonna edit it here. Shouldn't really do this, but it's like that. Commit changes. All right, so that was the error. Checking pipeline status. Pipeline syntax is correct now. Pipeline pending. So the stages, we see that it's already running. So let's see this stage, what's going on. We don't have any active runners that can run this job. Enable shared runners. We have a runner. Register the runner with this URL, add this registration token show runner installation instructions, project runners. So we do have our runner. Let's check, make sure. Um, what was it? Uh, sudo docker ps. We have our runner. It's here. We have GitLab CE. Well, let's check then, make sure that the runner is registered. 
Du, du, du. Let me see. Let's see, let's see. Uh, we have CICD, we have the create environment. We have this verify runners script that we've created. Let's try to run this script because it looks like there's no runners. Let's see, did anything change? Pending. If I click on the pipeline, right? Yes, pre snapshot. Job is stuck because you don't have any active runners that can run this job. The job has not yet started. So the runner seems to be an issue with it. CI settings. Register the runner with this URL and this registration token. Okay, give it a permission to execute. Create a GitLab runner user, install and run as a service. Command to register runner. would be this. So copy the instructions. Let's see if we can get it to register. Uh, we'll have our dev box here. And then registration token would be this registration token. And We'll register with 10 to 11, 55, 7 actually. Here would be 10 to 11, 55, 7. GitLab runner command not found. Okay, so let's troubleshoot this. Let's give it a try. Command not found for GitLab runner. So it means probably that we don't have this uh, command not found. Did you install manually? If sudo ends with the command not found, it means that the GitLab runner exactly is not available in root's path. Oh, what about if we do without sudo, just a GitLab runner register? Let's see if that works. Command not found. So maybe the installation of Git on the of the runner is not correct. Let's see what happened here in pipelines. Still stuck. Don't have any active runners.
register as many runners as you want. You can register on a separate user or separate servers. Available to tags, which type of job run can handle. Hmm, okay, so we're having some issues here with the runner. Command not found. So if we have a command not found, Hmm, because we have it actually as part of a Docker container. Um, for my scene and everything is okay. My runner is working on my local machine and I tested it with simple. Now I'm trying the following YAML. Come on, not found. That's not it. Using GitLab runner, build output. Docker file. Hmm, okay, so we're having trouble here with registering the runner. Uh, let me see, GitLab runner register. So if I change directory to CICD Twitch, create environment. And then verify runners. Let's see if our script verify runners, the shell script runs. Could not resolve host dev box. All right, so Let's change the IP address here, have it. Save it and try to run it again. Message 401 unauthorized. Uh, okay, so root cisco one two three four five let's see if i can log in with that account um new private window i will have it i'm gonna try to log in with the root account 55.7 sign in root Okay, so it works. Create GitLab token, so users. Unauthorized. getting an authorized on verify runners. Let's see what could be the problem. Create GitLab token. Curve for the login page to get a session cookie. Save it in temp cookies.
GitLab host, user sign in, then get the CSRF token, body header. Then send login credentials with curl using cookies. Tem cookies. User sign in, user login, GitLab user, GitLab password. Authenticity token, send curl to personal access token page to get auth token. Yes. CSRF token. Body header. For one unauthorized. Hmm. Let's see. So we don't have the runner. We are currently on version 15.11.0. Okay, what if we are with now? Oh, we're not going to do it right now, but it seems that we should upgrade soon. Okay, so run on installation instructions. Docker. To install run in a container, follow the instructions described in the GitLab documentation. View installation instructions. All right, this is how you can run GitLab runner inside a Docker container. Uh, okay, Docker images are designed as wrappers. The general rule is that every GitLab runner command normally executed as can be executed with Docker run. Getting the top level help information for GitLab runner command could be executed as Use Docker Vols to restart the runner container. Register the runner. The file step is straight on you. The GitLab runner container doesn't pick up any jobs until it's registered. If you change the configuration config.toml, you might need to restart the runner to apply the change. Make sure to restart the whole container instead of using GitLab runner restart. Hardware version. Registering a new runner. Describe launching a short live GitLab runner container to register the container you create during install. After you finish registration, the resulting configuration is written to your chosen configuration volume. It's loading the runner using the configuration volume. To register the runner using a Docker container, for Docker volume mounts or a GitLab runner, enter your GitLab instance URL. To 
to register a runner in Linux. After you install git a runner in a container. Yeah, so we have that run the register command based on the bound type. Uh, let's see. So we have our runner one volumes. All right, Twitch runners, Twitch runners. F box uh, GitLab runner config at C GitLab runner. Pseudo Docker PS. So we have our GitLab runner, but it's now registered. All right, so let's try to run Docker run RM IT V. GitLab dash runner dash config. Let's give it a try with this one on Etsy. GitLab runner. GitLab slash GitLab runner. Latest register. Enter the GitLab instance URL HTTP dev box. Enter the registration token. Registration token is Pipelines pending CI settings. Copy this. That's our registration token. Enter description for the runner. That's fine. Enter tags for the runner. 0 0.1 enter optional maintenance note failed crazy post again HTTP no such host ah okay so let's try this again and specify the IP address Enter the registration token. Tags. Registering runner succeeded. Enter an executor. This executor would be Docker. 
enter the default Docker image would be that Adriani CICD EN 010. Run and register successfully. Feel free to start it, but if it's running already, the config should be automatically reloaded. Configuration was saved. Okay. All right. So let's see. Refresh this. Assign project runners is this. Okay, so now if I go to pipelines, it's still stuck. Doesn't have any runners associated with it. Assign project runners. Active. GitLab runner version, last contact never. Okay, so we're making progress here slowly. Um, pipelines. Same project runners. Okay, so let's cancel the pipeline and run it again. Just gonna go here and say cancel this job. And then we go to pipelines and we see that it's canceled. Okay. So if we go to jobs, skipped it's cancelled and then if you go to schedules let's validate the pipeline okay looks good And if I want to rerun it, retry. So it's still stuck because it doesn't have a runner associated. Assign project runners. These runners are really tall groups of projects. Does not provide any share runners yet. Instead, you can register share runners in the admin area. Okay, so we have it registered. The runner registered successfully. Let's see, GitLab runner config that. TOML. Hmm. So interesting. We registered the runner, but it doesn't get picked up. Uh, assign project runners. It's right here. This runner is associated with specific projects. You can set up a project runner to be used by multiple projects, but you cannot make this a shared or group runner. Multiple projects, description, tags. When runner is locked, it cannot be assigned to other projects. Protected, can run, log for this project, no. Description, never so. 
how do I associate it runners? Let's see how associating it to my project. Set up a project runner for a project. Install GitLab runner and ensure it's running. Register the runner with the URL. Add this authentic registration token. We've done that. Uh, let's see if the root account we have visibility to this runner. With root, oh, let's see, Ch -ch -ch. administrator, and then groups, activity, contributed projects, personal projects, star projects. Okay, so there's not much here. That's not much here. So the runner is there, assigned project runners. Right, so it's uh, runners are either active or paused. Runner has never contacted this instance. Runner has never contacted this instance. GitLab runner has never contacted this instance. What does this mean? Then I'm picking up jobs, here's command. It's not contacted yet. Running GitLab very fresh, all is good. And GitLab shows GitLab runner verify. So let's see if we run that. GitLab runner. Verify. GitLab runner verify. Docker exec. We want to exec. Uh, sudo docker ps let's see what we called it okay so it's gonna be this container copy paste So what are folks seeing here? Deactivating S links on the machine we can let run and fixes the problem. And the same issue on Windows register as shell exactly it appears in the list, but it's marked as new runner has not connected yet. <coughs> After this is updated to connect and however if I leave the VM for a few hours, the runner become disconnected. 
GitLab run a verify. Running GitLab run a verify makes it connected again. GitLab run a verify. Running platform, no runner matches the filtering parameters. Hmm. So we see here the runner, it's a problem with the runner at this point. Uh, same project runners. Contacted this instance. I had the same issue and these steps helped to resolve this. I was running Gila's root, but I uh, ran the, as a normal user. Pipeline will pick up any available shared builder. It's able to share runners in your projects. You'll see a button there is able this when you register your local runner using it runner that a custom tag. So your project only picks up this runner. Once I use sudo gitlab runner command instead of using gitlab runner command and the current user, the warning is gone. Register command as a normal user. I had this issue, but it ran. Gitlab runner verify, which caused all runners to contact gitlab verifying their existence, and the issue went away. Okay, so let's see. Let's see GitLab runner config.toml. Oh, and we're we're out of time. Um, two minutes left. Okay, so since there's some problems with the runner, I'll have to troubleshoot. We had a look at it. Um, it shows us registered now with GitLab but I'm getting this runner has never contacted this instance. So there's still the issue and the runner doesn't pick up the job and the pipeline doesn't run. So we'll troubleshoot this next time, right? We're close at this point. I think this is kind of like the last step, making sure that the GitLab runner and GitLab work together and then it's able to pick up the, and start the pipeline. Um, so that's, the problem now, I need to figure out how to register and make sure that GitLab is a GitLab runner as a process and they work together and that the pipeline will run. At least we know the problem, it shows up here, but I still get this like warning message, runner has never contacted this instance. Could be something as easy as just restarting the runner Docker container, uh, but I'll, I'll keep investigating um, for the next couple of weeks. We're not going to have the streaming, uh, but we'll pick back up again second week of July. So we'll pick back up with troubleshooting this problem with the runner and GitLab and we'll troubleshoot at that point and hopefully get it running. But we're making progress, at least shows up now here. And next would be troubleshooting this and making sure we figure this out and get it running. So like I said, next couple of weeks, um, we'll not have the stream session going, but I'll be back and we'll actually be having it. Like I said, second week of July, we'll pick back up again and troubleshoot this. So thanks everyone for joining. Hope this was useful for you and uh, we'll keep at it next time. See you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.